Today I'm going to go through three questions which will hopefully uh, give you some insight into how to do inclusion exclusion problems. So here's our first problem. Let's have a look up here. In a school, 90 students study chemistry, 100 students study physics, and 10 study both. How many students study chemistry or physics? So there are broadly speaking two ways to do these sort of problems. In uh, late high school, maybe early um, university, you'll tend to look at it geometrically using Venn diagrams, but uh, I'll also show you the algebraic way of solving them, which you need as you get on to latter years in university. Um, so we draw two circles, one for chemistry, one for physics. And if we go to the problem, we can see that 10 people do chemistry and physics, so we can immediately write in the middle there 10. So 10 fall in the physics circle and the chemistry circle. And then we work our way out. So we know for chemistry there are 90 students in total. We've already put 10 down there, so we need 80 in this section. And for physics, we know there are 100 physics students. We've already used, well, put down 10 here, so we're going to have to put 90 there. So when we add that up, we get 180 students, and that's our answer. Now I want to show you the algebraic solution to the problem, which you'll be increasingly pushed towards as you leave high school and work your way through university. So first we need some notation. So let C be the set of chemistry students and let P be the set of physics students. Now what we need is this thing here. This is the union of the set C and P. So that's all the students who are doing chemistry or physics. And these bars here mean that we're interested in the cardinality of the, this set or the number of elements in the set. So we want the number of elements in the set, which is the union of the set of chemistry students and the set of physics students. And the inclusion-exclusion principle tells, gives us a formula for it. It says you add up the cardinality of the set C plus the number of elements in set P, and then you take away the intersection of C and P. That's that middle area that we saw before where you need to take that off because you've double counted it. If you look up here, you can see if I count all this, everything in C and everything in P, then I've double counted what's in C and P. And so I have to take that off. And so that gives me the same answer of 180. So let's go on to the second question. If you like this video, uh, just be aware that I've got lots of other videos in my Made Easy playlist I go through um, late high school, but mainly first and second year university level um, exam and test questions that you might find useful. I've also got uh, three or four other playlists with a whole lot of other interesting things in mathematics, which you can have a look at as well. Okay, so for our second question, we're going to extend this idea of inclusion exclusion to three sets. So now we're given basically here all the information um, about students studying chemistry, physics and history, which I'll leave you to read. And the question this time we're interested in is how many students study chemistry, physics or history? So you can do this using a Venn diagram. Again, draw your three circles and work from the inside out. So we know that five students study all three subjects, so we'll put that in the middle. Now, if I direct your attention to this area here, the intersection between chemistry and physics, we know that 20 students study physics and chemistry and five we're all already put here, so we have to put 15 here. And if we follow the same in, uh, line of thinking, we have to put five here and 10 here. Now let's try and fill up the rest of chemistry. We know that there are 90 students that study chemistry and we've already accounted here for 15 plus five plus five, so that's 25. So 90 less 25 is 65, so we'll write 65 here. Then we'll write, uh, same sort of thinking, we can write 70 for physics and 30 for history. So that makes um, 200 in total, so the answer is 200. So now let's do it algebraically. This time I've got three sets, C, P and H, and I've actually written here what we require. We require the cardinality of the set, which is the union of C, P and H. So any student that studies chemistry or physics or history. 
Now here's the inclusion exclusion formula for three sets. You add C plus P plus H. Now the problem there is that as we saw before, we've double counted the intersection between any two sets. So I take off the intersection of chemistry and physics, I take off the intersection of chemistry and history, and I take off the intersection of physics and history. Now if you go through the analysis now, you'll see that that area right in the middle, the intersection of all three, I haven't counted at all. It, it's, it's, it was in all of them actually. It was in C, P, H and the three intersections. So I've got three minus three. I, I, I haven't counted it. So I better add that one back. So I add back C intersection P intersection H. And I'm given all of those numbers in the problem. So I can just add it all up. 90 plus 100 plus 50 blah 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 blah. And that gives me 200. Before I do the last problem, a couple of inclusion exclusion principle stories. This is the page of a paper I did, and in particular here, I use the inclusion-exclusion principle for three sets, just like what, we, what we've just done. So without getting too involved in all the summations, this is where I add up the, the big circles. This is where I take off all the intersections between two of the circles, and then finally I add back that intersection of the three circles. Another time I was working with a very experienced mathematician on this paper and we got up to this line and then I went off and I did about a three-quarter page inclusion exclusion proof to get down to this line anyway when I showed it to him he said um, uh, let's just write here a simple inclusion exclusion argument leads to the asymptotic formula and uh, sure enough it got through the past the reviewer and it's now in the published paper so now let's go on to the last question I wanted to do how many numbers between 1 and 200 inclusive are not divisible by 2 or 7? This time we've got two sets, two big sets, so we can draw the, diag the Venn diagram. Here I'm going to put a rectangle around the two circles and I'm going to label it 200. This is our universe of the first 200 numbers and that's all that we are concerned about with this problem. So to do this one, um, we're going to use the floor function. So the floor function was just these two funny brackets. And all this means is just whatever's in the brackets gets pushed down to the, to the, the, the next um, integer value. So the floor of 3.14 is 3. We just go down until we hit an integer and we get 3. The, integer, uh, the floor of 5, for example, is just the number 5. In the case of uh, the numbers between 1 and 200 that are divisible by 2, we just take 200 divided by 2 and take the floor. So that's the floor of 100. We're also going to need the number of numbers that are, divis that are divisible by 7. And every 7th number up to 200 is divisible by 7. So it turns out that we need the floor of 200 divided by 7, which is the floor of 28 and 4 sevenths, which is 28. And we're also going to need the number of numbers that are divisible by both 2 and 7, which means they're divisible by 14. Just put it through that formula again with the floor function and we get 14 numbers. So now, having got that, we're now in a position to write out the solution. So we'll let u be the set of numbers from 1 to 200. That's the universal set. Let T be the set of numbers from 1 to 200 that are divisible by 2, and S is the set of numbers from 1 to 200 that are divisible by 7. So you have to be cl pretty clear here about what we want. We want the numbers that are not divisible by 2 or, or, nor 7. So we want the number in the universal set less the number that are divisible by 2 or 7. So that's what we want there on the left-hand side. So the number of elements of u is easy. There are 200 numbers in the universal set. Now we're going to take off the um, union of t and, uh, and s. And to do that I use the inclusion-exclusion principle formula. So it's the number of t plus the number in the set s minus the number in the set which is the intersection of t and s. So that's 200 minus, all in bracket, 100 plus 28 minus 14. That's where that, that comes from those flaws which I've got here, those floor calculations, and that gives us 86. So that's it for the inclusion-exclusion-exclusion uh, inclusion, principle. I hope you found it useful.